everyone hope you're doing well today hope you are having a lovely end of the month of may and you're excited for june um it's a little overcast today but and we but we did have some lovely sunny days recently and then some rain so pretty typical washington spring um my name is anna by the way i live in washington state on the west coast of the u.s um and i love to knit and to make things and that is what i like to talk about on my channel so today we're going to be going through um, projects I worked on in May, and then some projects I have planned for June, um, and that's about it. So we'll jump into it. Also, we have hit a thousand subscribers since the last video, so thank you guys all for being here. I really appreciate you having you here, and I just find it so fun to answer your comments and to chat with you. Um, so I wanted to flow it by you guys if you wanted to do a Ravelry group um, or like an Instagram group for us to chat about topics, about things that I've brought up on the videos, or if just like things, if you guys want to get to know each other, because I really enjoy getting to know you in the comments of my videos, but I don't know if you guys get to chat with each other. So I think it could be fun, um, to do that. It could also be a great place for me to share links. I'm going to talk to you about an idea I have a little bit later, but I think that would be a great place to share all of those links. Um, and just a place for us to like share progress if you you end up knitting this one of the same uh patterns that i'm knitting we could do like informal knit alongs on there um yeah so those are my, that's my thought let me know if you are interested in the comments below and i can set that up but i think it would be fun for us to have a little place to chat um let me know if you prefer ravelry or instagram i know ravelry is not accessible to everyone but i do use it quite a lot so let me know happy to figure something out. Okay, so let's get into finished objects. I don't have as much to talk about this month, so maybe it'll be a little bit shorter than in the normal hour, but we'll see. Um, okay, so the first finished object is this lovely thing that's kind of hard to show. This is my ballerina wrap top, um, which is a free pattern by Two of Wands, and I knit this in a dead stock, 100% wool DK weight yarn. Um, so it's no longer in production, but it's like 100% British wool in this purple color, which I just think is a lovely spring color. Um, I knit, I believe, the second, maybe the third size of this, and then I just, uh, the original pattern has little cap sleeves, and then I just knit um, mine uh, straight down and then did a quick gather. You can see my ends, which is a trend in this, this you know, here channel. I did weave them in, and then they came unwoven but they have I-cord edging. So I just did a decrease round before I did the I-cord. And then it is a wrap top. So it has these really, really long I-cord ties and then tons of I-cord detailing. So I've got very good at I-cord. You do a long attached I-cord at the bottom, you do this applied I-cord, and then there's I-cords on the sleeves as well. So that's my ballerina wrap top. I'll put a video of me or a picture of me wearing it so you can kind of see how it fits. Um, my gauge was a little tight on this, which, you know, I'm always a little bit off on gauge and it doesn't really bother me. I just blocked it quite aggressively so that it would um, fit pretty well. And besides that, I don't have a whole lot to say about this pattern. Um, it's a free pattern and it's very size inclusive. There's like, I think it goes up from an extra small to a 5XL. So tons and tons of sizes. Um, it's knit flat, which is less than ideal. I really don't prefer to knit flat, but such is the nature of a cardigan kind of style top. Um, this isn't my normal color, but I did get this yarn secondhand. I got it at my local like Goodwill. Um, and I think I have 350 grams of it and I used all of it. That was the point of the points of this project because I didn't really have enough to make like a larger style sweater for me. Um, so this is much more fitted. And then the sleeves aren't full length. They're like about three quarter length, which, um, and I used up like pretty much every last drop of this yarn to finish up this project. So. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this. I may give it to one of my sisters who might be more inclined to wear it more often than I do. I just, this isn't like the best, I don't know. The color's fine, it's just not so for me and I don't know quite how to style it. So, but I just thought it would be the perfect project for this yarn um, and it turned out nicely. So that is my ballerina wrap top by Two of Wands. There are tons and tons and tons of pattern of um, projects of this, both on Ravelry and Instagram. Um, so you can see people have done it in all sorts of fibers and sizes and colors and it's a nice pattern and it's very versatile for spring because it's like a cardigan but it's a little more fancy I think because it has the wrap like a little more elegant 
so yeah that's my ballerina wrap top i think it ended up being 350 grams of dk weight yarn um and yeah turned out turned out pretty well um my second project that i finished this month i'm really really pleased with this um this is my rubus blouse square neck from refined knitwear um and i knit mine the original pattern is knit in two strands of mohair um, but I knit mine in this beautiful blue heathered unspun yarn, um, which I originally got one big 200 gram cake of unspun yarn, which I believe was from White Buffalo. I got it secondhand at my local reuse craft store, um, and I believe it was from White Buffalo, but it could also be from Briggs and Little because I know that White Buffalo is no longer, it was a Canadian brand that produced yarn. They no longer um, exist. But I think, and I could be wrong, but I think they may have been bought out by Briggs and Little because Briggs and Little Country Roving, which is an unspun yarn, um, comes in this exact color. So either the skein that I bought was Briggs and Little or this was White Buffalo that was then purchased and produced by Briggs and Little. But this yarn is still available. I will link it for you down below from Briggs and Little. It comes in like a big 200 gram cake and it's like five plies of unspun spun yarn kind of wound together so I very meticulously unwound each of the five or six plies um and I ended up with this I really like how it turned out it has these really huge big um balloon sleeves they're very puffy I made mine about elbow length so they hit right above the elbow in the pattern there's two options for sleeve length there's like a more traditional short sleeve and then this longer short sleeve um, and it has this beautiful square neck, which has I-cord finishes as well. And then there's an I-cord finish at the bottom, which I like, but it does tend to roll. So I might need to just like steam it again um, and pin it down and then steam it really aggressively to see if I can, can get it to stop from rolling. But I do kind of tend to wear this tucked in, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then it also has I-cord bind offs at the edge. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this. I think I made the third size of this as well. Um, the sleeves, I think, are a little big, um, so I maybe could have done with, like, probably two or three fewer raglan increases um, before splitting for sleeves, or just stopped increasing on the sleeve, or there's a few options. I could have stopped increasing on the sleeve and kept e increasing on the body, because I do like the width of the body. Um, I could have decreased the sleeve down a little bit, tapered it, and then still done the rapid decrease to get that poofy at the edge. Because um, it's just like really wide and it felt like it was taking forever to knit, even though it wasn't a ton of stitches. Um, but I really like this poof at the top. You do it with like be doing some rapid increases. And I just think it's really pretty and quite elegant. Um, this is really what light it used less than I still have this much yarn left over from my 200 gram cake, which is probably. 30 ish grams so this is super light but it's nice and warm um because it's such an airy yarn it holds a lot of air in there and traps the heat but not it's breathable as well at the same time so it's really lovely for spring um i'm really happy with it i kind of want to knit this again in the two strands of mohair but maybe the long sleeve version um refined knit hair wear has a lot of really pretty patterns she has I think the other one that I wanted to make was the Negroom blouse square neck. So it's a square neck, but it doesn't have puff sleeved and it's long sleeve. Um, but it still has the I-cord edging around the neck and then twisted rib on the on the cuffs and hem. Um, I also really, really like the way that the raglan increases look. It, they're really hard to see, um, especially, I feel like in this yarn, but also it would be kind of hard to see in a mohair as well. Um, there we go. You can kind of see the way that, you make them and you end up with these little like eyelets instead of your traditional raglan stitches. Um, so I just think it's a really pretty little detail that probably like you can kind of see how it makes this really pretty line down the back. You probably wouldn't notice it if you weren't making it. And I don't know that people would notice it when you wear it, especially not on the front because of the way that the puffs um, sleeves fall in the, but maybe you could see it in the back. I just think it's a really pretty detail that you as the maker would probably be the only one to notice, but it's really satisfying. And just like knowing that there are pretty little details um, in your project, I find quite satisfying. So I'm very happy with this. I would definitely knit some more of her patterns. They are translated from, I think, Danish. So they were pretty clear for the most part, but there were a couple places that were like a little weird. But if you've knit before, if you've knit any raglan pattern before, you could probably figure it out. Um, and she has beautiful designs. So I would definitely make more from refined knitwear, which 
Um, Refined Nightwear is not on Ravelry, it's only on her website, and you can also find her on Instagram. So I will link the, the pattern pages and stuff down below. Um, yeah, very lovely. It's a really cute little top. I'm going on a trip this week, and I think I'm going to take it with me. Okay, that's finished object number two. Finished object number three, you have not seen before because I cast it on and cast off in the time since we have spoke last. But I'm very pleased with it. I knit this really quickly because I just wasn't feeling inspired by a lot of my other projects. So I cast this on and just like didn't stop until it was done. This is the Lou sweater from the Sundeskarn Miktidama, like soft for women pattern book from spring of 2022. Um, it's this really pretty, very cozy um, mock neck raglan and then it has these really big straight sleeves with the long ribbing and then the long ribbing on the body a split hem um and yeah it's very large I really like the raglan detail it's really cute and it's really cozy I just finished this yesterday I blocked it overnight and then wore it this morning when I was out um but it's very cozy I made this in Hillesvog Forgarn which is their unspun yarn which I bought at the Hillesvog mill when I was in Norway. Um, if you'd like to hear more about my trip and the yarn that I got, I will link it for you, that video. Um, it's from March. But yeah, I'm really pleased with this. It made up pretty quickly. I think I did the whole thing in 13 days, which, you know, I knit quite a lot, but um, it turned out really nicely. It's got a really deep yoke. I knit the second size, um, and there are two gauges available for this in the booklet. There's... Um, a 16 stitch gauge version and an 18 stitch gauge version version the 18 stitch gauge version is knit on 4.5 millimeter needles and the 16 gauge version is knit on a five point on five millimeter needles i ended up with a 17 stitch gauge on five millimeter needles so i ended up like kind of right between the two patterns gauges which was fine so i ended up knitting the stitch counts from the 18 stitch version which is the Sunday, the double Sunday version, I think, if you have this book. Double Sunday edition. So the original pattern is written with DK weight and mohair held together. Um, send this garn double, double Sunday and send this garn tin silk mohair. But this is just two strands of the unspun yarn. So if you had like two strands of new to then, you could do something like this or two strands of float to lopi or any unspun yarn. You'd probably get a similar gauge. Um, yeah, so the uh, ribbing is all knit on a 4.5 millimeter needle and the body is on a 5. The stockinette parts are on 5. Um, I really like this yarn. It's really lovely. It's like, it's for me, I'm not very sensitive to wool, but it, for me it is definitely next to skin soft and it's, but it's got a little bit of like, you can, it's got like a nice toothiness in it. It's not scratchy, I would say, but you, it's just feels wooly, which I really like. Um, and it doesn't have long guard hairs like Plotulopi that stick out and make it a little bit more prickly. It's a pretty smooth and uniform unspun yarn. It's the, definitely the most delicate of the three different kinds of unspun yarn I've worked with at this point. So I've used Plotulopi quite a few times. I used this, we'll call it Briggs and Little unspun yarn, which I think is pretty robust for an unspun yarn. Like they're generally pretty delicate, but the way that this is spun like the fibers stick to each other. I did not really have any trouble with breakage on this one. This one is definitely the most airy unspun yarn. Like the fiber is not very dense, which I appreciate. So I appreciate that it's applied double or it's wound up at the cakes with two strands held together. So it's really easy to knit from if you want to hold two strands together. Um, but this is definitely the most delicate. Like if you tug on it, I, I'm not super soft with my knitting. Like when I'm knitting on a project with unspun, I'm not going to like I'm not, I, first of all, don't worry if the yarn tears because you can put it back together pretty, pretty easily. But I don't like, I don't know. I'm not like delicate with my projects. I'm not like put, keeping them in a project bag at all times and like very delicate, delicately transporting them around with me. Um, but none of these yarns really tore. None of them yarns tore at all just from the way that I tensioned them. And I don't think I'm a particularly tight or particularly loose knitter. I'm generally like right on gauge for most patterns, sometimes a little bit tighter, but I don't. I didn't have a problem with the yarn breaking just from knitting with it. The only time the yarn would really break was if I would like move really quickly and just like accidentally put tension on it and it would break. But I didn't find this unpleasant to knit with at all. Just the two strands of unspun yarn. I know 
that the lovely Inga from Knitting Traditions has used this yarn quite a lot. She actually is using it in a project right now and that she talked about in her most recent video. Um, but she does find it a little bit too delicate for her, so she always holds it with a silk mohair. But knitter's choice on that one. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's nicely oversized. I was really going for like a sweatshirt kind of sweater and that's what this feels like to me. Um, the sleeves are really wide. <laughs> like you don't do any decreases at all in the sleeves. And I think I could have gotten away with, I probably would like this a little bit more, honestly, if there were a bit of decreases in the sleeve, because I like the nice big open cuff and you'll see in the cutaway what I, how it fits me. I like the nice big open cuff, but I think a little bit of tapering probably would have helped and I could have made the body a little bit longer. I did play some yarn chicken on this sweater in the end. Um, the cuffs are supposed to be 14 centimeters of ribbing, which is really long. So these are probably about nine. So that's five more centimeters of ribbing that these are meant to have. Um, and I, I did one sleeve to the full 14 centimeters, bound it off with an Italian bind off, and then realized once I'd gotten to the ready. So I did the body until I ran. I had, okay, I'm going to clarify. I had two cakes of this yarn. Um, they're 200 grams each. I had two cakes that I bought in Norway. Cannot get any more of it very easily. So that's what I had to knit the sweater with. Um, and I figured it would be fine because Inga had used this yarn. She'd used two cakes of this and she got the tulip sweater by Melody Hoffman at like a pretty decent length. Um, so I figured I could make this just fine. Um, and I finished, so I did one whole cake of the, got me probably to like, did the whole yoke and then probably about this far down the body. So I was like, oh yeah, I should have plenty in the second cake to get the arms and the rest of the body. But the arms are quite a lot of yarn because they're so wide. So I did one full arm, did the ribbing to the full length prescribed in the pattern, did an Italian bind off, and then I got to just before the ribbing on the second arm and realized like I was going to run low. I had less than 100 grams of yarn left. I think I had 80 grams of yarn left. And I was like, that doesn't seem very good. So I ended up unpicking Italian bind off from this sleeve. This is unspun yarn, by the way. I unpicked an Italian bind off and unspun yarn, which to be fair, I just did not feel like I had any fiber left to lose. Like if I did, if I wasn't worried about have about how much yarn I had, if I would have just cut it off. But honestly, I don't find it that hard to unpick an Italian bind off. It takes like a little bit of time, but it's not that bad. So I unpicked the Italian bind off on this one. And then I ended up just like knitting directly from this cuff to this cuff. And so I knit this until it was the same length as the mock neck. I figured if all the ribs were the same length, it would look okay. So I knitted it until it was the same neck, length as the neck. And then I knit a little bit longer on the cuff and then I finished off the body. And the ribbing at the bottom, so you have a split hem, the back is supposed to be a little bit longer than the front, but it worked out that I had just enough yarn to make them like identical number of rows. Um, and that just happened to be the same length of ribbing as the sleeves and the neck. So it worked out perfectly. Um, but if I had made the sleeves tapered a little bit I probably could have done the ribbing to the full length and made the back a little bit longer but I'm still happy with it as it is um it fits really nicely it feels I've blocked it now so I feel like the fibers have all kind of meshed together I'm not worried about it breaking or tearing um it's nice and squishy and it actually was not terrible to frog because the two strands are held together when you knit them they kind of fuse together so as I was frogging back the one sleeve it wasn't like breaking constantly it broke a couple of times but it really wasn't that bad um so yeah that is my finished Lou sweater Lugans or whatever you want to call it I love the color it's a natural sheep gray um it was super minim minimally processed and it smelled extremely sheepy when I was knitting with it um like to the point that it was hurting my head a little bit I think there was just a lot of lanolin left in the fibers um and it definitely still smells wooly, but a lot of that sheepiness has gone. I washed it and a lot of dirt came out. Like, even when it was wound up in the case, you could see some spots where there was still dirt left in the yarn. Which, honestly, I thought was really nice. It just means that it was, like, very minimally, minimally processed. I feel like this yarn was just, like, sheared off of a gray sheep, washed, carded, and then, like, put out into the unspun. So, extremely minimally processed. Which just makes me feel happy to have this lovely, sustainable yarn. Sustainable, except for that I brought it home with me from another country several hundred, several thousand kilometers away, but, um, I'm really happy with it. It's going to be a very cozy sweater. And because I live in a kind of a gray place, I will be able to wear this all year round. So yes, that's my lovely Lou Ginser from 
send a scarf. Um, I did also want to say that there are, I really, really like this pattern book and I showed it in my last video and there are a lot of great patterns in here, but this pattern book is not particularly accessible, um, especially if you live outside of Europe. I had to order this from the UK. I paid quite a lot of shipping for it. Um, and I know that a lot of European like yarn stores won't ship outside of Europe. And then another thing is that a lot of sellers who sell this book require you to buy a project's quantity of yarn with it so that like puts the price for this book if you're having to buy yarn there is a sock pattern in this book so like technically you could buy the quantity of yarn that you need for the sock pattern and then get the book but that would still make it like kind of expensive so one thing i wanted to do um and let me know if you're interested was kind of try and dupe a lot of these patterns because they're not they're really lovely patterns um but not all of them are like the most unique patterns I've ever seen. Like, um, so this is the sweater, the picture of the book. And it's very similar to the My Favorite Things Knitwear sweater number nine, which also has the same kind of like wide rib raglan detail. Um, another sweater in here that I could think of a dupe for. So they have this Guernsey sweater, which reminds me a lot of the petite knit Ingrid sweater. The, um, Another one that I thought of a dupe for is the Frankie sweater, which is on the cover of the book. It has these really long um, twisted rib details. Uh, the Noor sweater from Strika Kaffa, or her name's Tanya, uh, a Norwegian designer, has a similar detail. So if you guys would be interested in me going through the patterns in this book and try and find like similar patterns that are accessible, either like something you can purchase on Ravelry or purchase on the designer's website, let me know because I really like I think the style of the patterns in this book is gorgeous and I'm happy to curate the same vibe of patterns from this book. Curate like a, the same styles in more accessible patterns for you if that's something you're interested in. Because um, I don't think it would be too difficult. I've already thought of dupes for most of these patterns. Um, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in and I would be happy to post that on our Ravelry thread where I could do a little bit more of a long form post with links and stuff. So. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. I really like this book and I've already got two projects going from this book and because I paid so much for it, I feel like I need to knit quite a few more. Yes, that's my thoughts on this pattern book. If you can't access the book itself, I'm happy to put together like a dupe guide for you. So yes, that's my finished objects. I also have a half finished object to show you, which is this little sock. It's just a vanilla sock that I'm knitting for my grandmother. Um, with some yarn that I dyed up myself. So I dyed this, honestly, probably in the end of April, and I did record a video of me dyeing it up. So it started like this, and it's ended up this really pretty purple color. Um, you can kind of see, I'm trying to get my face out of it, but this was the original color, and then this is the color I got. And I did a video of how I got there. If you'd be interested in me sharing that footage with you, I'm happy to put it together. I'm um, just figured I would ask before I spent the time on it, but this is the sock that I got out of it. It's just a vanilla sock. Um, I was thinking I would do some like really pretty lace or something, but the yarn just really wasn't conducive to it. It's a two ply um, needlepoint yarn. It's 100% wool, but it's like a a vintage Persian wool for needlepoint, basically for embroidery. Um. So it didn't really work with lace and honestly it was faster and easier for me to just do a vanilla sock. So I knit this on 2.5 mil needles with 64 stitches. It's got twisted rib at the top and then pretty decent length of leg. I did an eye of partridge heel for the first time, which was fun. It's super stretchy and squishy. I like it a lot. Um, and then I did my gusset decreases, which I usually do my gusset decreases every round. But on this one, I was just kind of experimenting and did it every other round. So the gusset is a lot longer than I would normally get on one of my hand knit socks. But I kind of like it. It leaves plenty of room in the foot. Um, and then by the time I was finished with the gusset, I didn't have a whole lot of stock in it left before I did my just normal wedge toe. So yeah, um, I'm not sure if the video is going to be able to pick it up. But I did do some like kind of speckling in this yarn. And this is a non-superwash kind of more rustic wool. Um, you can kind of see like here, I did a little bit of speckling, which ended up in some like pretty variegation. 
Um, so I'm really pleased with that. I think it looks kind of pretty and special. You can maybe see it better on the bottom right here. Yeah, you see these blue specks. I really like to dye yarn. I think it's really fun. Um, but I just definitely do it as a hobby. I wouldn't want to make a business out of it. Um, and there's lots of great resources online about how to dye yarn. So yeah, I think it's fun. Um, yeah, there's some like pinky spe speckles in here as well. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I've cast on the second one, but I'm like halfway through the ribbing. So I didn't think it was worth it to show you that. But yeah, this is my first lock. I need to get the, need to get the second one done because I'm going to see my grandma in just a couple of days. So need to finish that up. But yeah, it's my little vanilla sock. I think it's really pretty. Um, and I think, I think she'll really like it. I think the color will be really nice for her. So yeah, it's my little sock. I like the heel a lot. I just like how squishy it is and it's quite pretty. So yeah, that's my last finished object. Um, I've got two whips, if you don't count the other sock, um, which I've just gradually started. So my first one is also a pattern from this book, and it is the, oh gosh, this is this is the Hillisvog yarn, by the way. It's like so thin. I have barely anything left, like less than a gram. Um, but I am making, here it is, the cherry dress from this book. So it's this really pretty long raglan, large sleeve, just simple stockinette dress. Um, and I'm knitting it with this yarn that I got from Ice Yarns, which is a Turkish distributor. Um, I bought this last summer. It's a 65% wool, 35% cotton blend. So like a good Pacific Northwest summer blend. Um, and this is kind of like a, honestly, like a sport weight, but I think this pattern calls for DK. I think the pattern is written for Sunday Scarn Sunday held with mohair and Sunday is a fingering weight. So I think you end up with a 23 stitch gauge on this. Let me look at the pattern. It's a 21 stitch gauge and I think I have a 23 stitch gauge. Um, the pattern is written for four millimeter needles. I went up half a needle size just to kind of try and loosen my gauge up a little bit. And this is the fabric that I'm getting. I did do a swatch. Um, this is my little swatch. I'm trying to be better about swatching. I don't like it, but this is my little swatch on four millimeter needles and it's washed. So you can see that the, because it's like a, it's kind of a blown yarn. Um, it bloomed a little bit with washing and filled in some of the gaps. So, um, so I'm hoping that the same thing will happen for this because my fabric is a little bit loose, but I don't think it's too loose. I think it'll be a nice like transitional weather piece. But yeah, I've just started it. I've got the yoke going, um, just the ribbing and the front of the raglan. I probably need to put it on a larger needle. I just put it on a larger needle, but it grows fast. Um, I think I have to end up do, I think I have to do, I'm probably a third of the way through the raglan. So yeah, I'm a little bit more, I'm just about a third of the way through the raglan, I think. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna make the second or the third size yet. I think because my gauge is a little off, I'm just gonna increase and then try it on and decide when I wanna stop increasing for the body and the sleeves. Um, let me show you, see if I, you can see a better picture of how deep the yoke is on this um, and how wide the sleeves are. So this is the same kind of thing, but the sweater version, but you can see the sleeves that are really wide and the yoke is quite deep. So I'm not sure that that's how I want it to fit on me. Um, so I may just kind of freestyle it. And then here's another picture where you can see like how wide the sleeves are. And I think they split for sleeves like about here. So it's quite a deep yoke. And so you can also see in this picture where she's got her arm up, like quite a deep yoke, quite a wide sleeve. I'm not sure that that's the look I want. So I'll just knit the yoke until I want to split and then I'll split. And then I will just knit in the round forever. I'll just knit in the round forever until I get to the right length. So this is going to be a longer term project, but I kind of like I'm mentally setting a goal to have this finished by the end of July. So I can kind of wear it a little bit in the late summer, early fall months. I've got a ways to go. I've got a long ways to go. But once I get past the yoke, like this will just be the most mindless knitting in the round in the entire world. So yeah. And then I also have started, excuse me, I also started my Magnolia, which is a pattern from Rowan. I'll put the picture of the pattern here for you. 
but it's basically like a button down shirt almost it's like a loose kind of summery linen-y shirt vibe and i'm using drops love you seven which is drops like super simple 100 percent cotton fingering weight yarn it's extremely affordable i think on wool warehouse you can get it for like 80 pence which is like a dollar and 10 cents or something um, I got mine at a yarn store in Iceland. I think I paid it like more like a dollar fifty to two dollars for each ball, but still, I got eight or nine balls of this, so it's gonna cost me like less than twenty dollars to make this top. Um, and it's knit in pieces, which is annoying, but I didn't want to adapt it to be knit kind of in larger pieces because I wanted the stability of the sleeves or of the seams on a project like this. I just think that that makes more sense. Because I could have adapted it to be knit, it would still be knit flat, but like the whole body as one kind of big back and forth instead of two front panels, a back panel. Um, so that's what I decided to just go for it and knit it in the panels. So I started the front panel. I think this is the front left panel. And I've done, I'm trying to think where you end up. You do some shaping after a certain point. So I think I've done like maybe a third of that. Um, and I really like it. It's knit on three millimeter needles, so it's really teeny tiny. Um, but overall, I don't think this is a ton of hours of knitting. This is like, okay, maybe it's like 10 hours of knitting, which doesn't seem like a lot for this project product. But I think it's quite nice. I really like this yarn. I think the color that I have is 01 oatmeal maybe or off white. Um, the stain that I'm working off doesn't have the band on it anymore, but I will put it in the description box for you. But yeah, it's, I think it's 28 stitch gauge. I haven't measured my gauge. I didn't swatch for this because I'm lazy, but it's a tight gauge, kind of like a fine, but I just really like the drape of this fabric. I think it's really nice and I think it's going to be really pretty when it's done. Um, ideally, I would like to finish this, you know, in the summer months so that I can wear it in the summer months. So I need to kind of crack on on this guy. But I think when I, once I finish the socks for my grandma, this will become my commute knitting. Um, cause I find knitting back and forth a lot less annoying when I'm not like focused on the fact that I'm knitting back and forth. If I'm like listening to a podcast or an audiobook or something or watching a movie, um, I did knit on, knit on this in the movie theater for like a short hour and a half long movie. Um, so yeah, that's what I have of this. I basically have to knit this the same, but the other side and the whole back panel. And then I think you pick up and knit down for the sleeves. Even if you don't, I might do that anyway, because... Actually, I think you pick up and then knit them flat, but I'm going to pick up and knit them in the round because I don't hate myself. Um, so yeah, that's my lovely little magnolia coming along slowly. I did put both this and the dress down for a while while I was working on the blue sweater because that was more fun. So yeah, those are my works in progress that I have at the moment. Not a lot, but enough. Um, so yes, now I want to talk to you about knitting plans. So I've got this book, like I was saying earlier, because I bought it and shipped it all the way to me from another country, I feel like I need to make a lot of the patterns out of it. So my next cast on, I think, is going to be the Amy flipover, which I know Inga is making. She just cast hers on. And I'm going to make mine in this brown merino that I have um, in stash that used to be a sweater from REI that I um, unraveled. If you would like to know how I unravel yarn to reuse it, I will link a video for you here, but I just did this teeny, teeny, tiny swatch. I'm a little below gauge. I think this is on a three, this is on whatever the needle size they call for, which, sorry, I'm just flipping through this book and kind of being crazy, but yes, it is a 19 stitch, no, wrong one. It's a it's knit on 3.5 millimeter needles, so I think I'm going to size up to knit on 4 millimeter needles. It's supposed to have a 23 stitch gauge. I think this has closer to 26. Um, but this is a one size pattern, so I'm not really that worried about it. And if it does end up being a little snug, I'll just block it kind of aggressively. Um, and since it's merino, I figure it will kind of like loosen up over time. But yeah, this is my teeny tiny swatch that you can't even see because it's this really dark chocolatey brown. Um, I thought about trying to find a mohair to pair with it, but I just don't know if I'm going to be able to find a mohair that pairs with this dark of kind of warm of a brown. Actually, it's not cool. This dark of a brown. Um, and I feel like it's always going to be over something, and I would want the mohair next to my skin. 
so it seems like a waste to do mohair on a garment that's not going to touch my skin at all so yeah there's my teeny little swatch that lives on my pin board with a couple other swatches um yeah so I definitely want to do that from this book the socks in this book are really cute they're called the snow bell socks I think is the English name here that doesn't really help you but they're those cute little socks that have like a ruffle at the top they're toe up socks and they have like a cute little ruffle they have a short row heel um I also really want to knit this zipper kind of sweater. It's like the, it's a similar to the zipper sweater from Petite Knit, but a little different. There is a sweater that I found that is very similar that I will put in my dupe situation, but I just think it's really pretty. Although I think I would omit the tapered waist shaping, um, but it just seems like a good, nice kind of sweatshirty vibe. Um, the Guernsey sweater, I mean, come on, that's a good one. That I think maybe would be a fall knit for me. Um, I have some yarn and stash that would work for that. I might knit this one, the Jolie, which is this pretty, it's all mohair, and it's got stripes in it with some pearl bumps. I'm not sold on that one, but I might do that one. Yeah, there's just so many great sweaters in here. I also know that Inga just cast this one on. This is called the... Jewels. This is the Jewels sweater. It's this really pretty textured yoke all over mohair sweater. I don't know if I would like that as much, but I do think it's really pretty. So I'm just going to wait to see Inga's version and the size I want to make it. But yeah, tons of patterns in that book that I want to make. I also, um, there's just so many things that I want to make and I can't decide what order to make them in. And I'm just feeling a little overwhelmed. But if you're ever wondering what I'm considering making, I keep my Ravelry queue quite updated because it keeps me organized mentally. So you can always check that. Um, yeah, there's so many things I want to knit. I'm just it's a little time. I've also been really into sewing lately. So I've been spending a lot of time on that. I just feel like spring is a great time to sew. I sewed two dresses last week and I'm about, I'm working on a pair of shorts right now. So yeah, that's what I'm at. Those are some upcoming projects I have for you. I don't have a ton of acquisitions today. Um, so I will be done here in just a minute. But I did want to show you, I actually bought this last month and I forgot to show it to you, but this is just like a big, it's like a vintage binder kind of thing that I got at my local creative use thrift store for 50 cents. It's like vinyl covered. It's not, it's like got cardboard inside and then it has all of these sleeves. And so I'm using it to store all my needles because the system I had going before was not it. So basically I wrote the size just like in a Sharpie on each of the sleeve that I have and it's got my DPNs and my circulars of all lengths. Um, it basically it's got all my needles in here except for my interchangeables which I keep in their own. They came in like a nice case so I keep them in there. Um, but yeah this is my system for organizing my needles. I feel like you could also do this with like um like a CD case at a, that you could find at a thrift store or like an old photo album. You could even just do it with like a binder and pocket protectors, but this has been life changing for me. Um, I have some needles actually that I need to put away here. Um, where is that one? These are both four millimeter short circulars. I know that because I use them a lot. So I'm just gonna file them away in their little sleeve. And now I'm so organized. It feels great to have this. So would highly recommend some kind of system for organizing your needles. It doesn't have to be a super fancy, like beautiful leather case, which like no shade to anyone who wants to buy a super fancy, beautiful leather case. I would love to have one of those someday, but this is what's working for me right now. So, and I think it's cute. It's like, I can just slot it on my bookshelf. I'll hold all my needles. Um, and then speaking of books, I did get, I did not buy any yarn this month, which I'm feeling very proud of myself because I'm trying to knit down my stash, which actually I'm really happy that I got two sweater quantities of yarn out of my stash this month. Basically three, because this used most of the skein and this is just scraps. Um, but I did buy this book when I was, again, at my local creative reuse thrift store, my favorite place on earth. This is called The Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters by Ann Budd, which is from Interweave Press. Um, and it basically just has like formulas for any, for four kinds of top down sweaters. So it has like a circular yoke, a raglan, a set in sleeve, and then, but it's not like a pick, 
it's not like a sewn in set in it's like the kind where you work short rows back and forth and then a saddle shoulder as well and basically it gives you like all of the stitch counts for everything so a circular yoke it tells you the yarn requirements and everything so if i wanted to make a 38 finished bus circumference with a three stitch per inch gauge i need i would need 567 meters of yarn I would need to cast on 47 stitches and like it tells you how much yarn you would need how many stitches to cast on how many stitches you need to have like how many increases to do how like it tells you everything basically um which is so nice and it has adult sizes and children's sizes for four different kinds of sweaters and then it also gives you some patterns as well um so like an application of how you would use the formulas in this book which I just think is so handy. I almost didn't buy it, but it was $7. And I was like, this, this is an investment for me in my future because I do want to do a little bit of designing, not because I want to like make it my job, but just because there are some gaps in my wardrobe of things that I want, but I haven't seen patterns for. And then I also just have some ideas cooking in my silly little brain that I want to make. So I figured this would make my life significantly easier for not only like coming up with the design, but also then grading that design to larger sizes if I wanted to share it. So yeah, that's what I got. I think this is wonderful. If you can track down a copy of this, if you're at all interested in making up your own patterns, like, um, I haven't used it yet. I will put that copy out, but I do plan to use it. I wanna make a t-shirt design and I think this would be fabulous for that. So very happy with that. Um, okay, that's all for me today. I hope you have a lovely, lovely month of June. Um, I do wanna just, wanted to ask if you guys would be interested in a stash tour because I do have quite the stash and I'm trying to organize it and I just wanted to see if that would be something you'd be interested in not in like a show-offy way but like a this is the yarn I have and these are the projects I'm kind of planning with them because I do have plans for a lot of the yarn in my stash just haven't gotten to knitting it yet so if you'd be interested in that let me know thank you again for subscribing I'm really happy to have hit the thousand subscriber milestone it's a big deal for me I've been working on for a while so thank you for subscribing if you're new here feel free to subscribe and join our lovely little band of friends here um let me know what you think about some kind of social group for us where we can chat with each other in an easier way than just some youtube youtube comments um and let me know if you have any videos you'd like to see any recommendations for content that i want that you'd like me to make um yeah that is all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. I've really enjoyed spending this time with you and appreciate you spending it with me and I will see you all very soon.